My name is Stan Rogers. I work for the Air Force Research Lab at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in the Electro-Optics Countermeasures and Applications Group. I'm a research scientist engineer. I develop technologies and solutions for the military in defense of this nation. Countermeasures means creating through light a way of jamming or dazzling a missile that might be coming at me that's using optics as its guidance and control mechanism. Countermeasure is a way of negating their ability to do harm through the use of light or light properties. My particular areas of specialty are digital controls. I'm an electrical engineer and a computer engineer and I also specialize in electro-optics, optical and photonic type system developments. Many different applications utilize photonics. For example, lasers utilize photonics. Our work in the Air Force Research Lab is to develop systems that can operate much faster than in the past. It gives us the technological edge over our adversaries, which allows us to respond quicker to things that they might be doing in their whole world. A laser only generates one wavelength of light. So, and it's all focused in one direction versus a flashlight generates light in many different directions. A laser only generates light in one direction. So the beauty of being able to operate at one wavelength is that you have such discreteness that you can detail, tailor your systems around that one wavelength versus having it a broad array of wavelengths that anybody can pick up your signal. So it's focused energy that you can control and you can develop systems around, both the transmitter as well as the receiver. Through a demonstration, you can show that light can be refracted using prisms within a water medium and some of the demonstrations that we do use we actually insert lenses in the water we show how refraction occurs between the index refraction of water and the glass material that's being inserted into the water and you'll see light actually bending if you move it left to right you can see that beams actually being steered left and right in the military applications beam steering is very important the beam steer device itself can be used to direct energy to a point, and we will call that a target in military applications. A missile that we're using to deploy to that target has mechanisms in it that seek that energy and will actually follow the laser train itself to the target. Beam steers are also used in military applications for being able to jam a missile that might be coming at an airplane. So we use the optical energy to actually jam by sending signals through the air to confuse the actual missile that's coming at us or the actual pilot himself. So Beamsters are, is a very important technology for military applications. Laser communication is a big application for the military, the government, whether it be the Air Force, Army, or even the Navy. Laser communications allows us to send information real fast to our troops. Light can communicate depending upon how you use it. For example, in the communication systems, when we use lasers, we learn how to modulate that light to be able to communicate to somebody on the other end. We can communicate that light through after modulation through different types of medium, whether it be air, whether it be fiberglass, or even through water. If you use fiber optics, you can propagate light around the world in seven and a half times per second. A fiber optic is like a channel, it's a conduit where you have a piece of glass material surrounded by another piece of glass material because of the index of refraction difference between the two, light, once it goes in it, actually stays in it if you steer light at the right angle. So fiber optics is a way of being able to channel light or to propagate light from one point to another. 
or if you're trying to communicate through water, it will propagate around the world five and a half times per second, which is real rapid. So we're talking about increasing the efficiency of communications even around corners or around big objects. But we also can use LEDs and the actual electronics to control LEDs in an array to be able to communicate as well. That's another form of spatial light modulation. In this case here, we have an array of LEDs and the programming of that LED as you rotate it around in synchronous form can actually create the illusion that you have some word being presented to you in air, a virtual billboard in the sky. Engineering will always require the use of problem-solving skills, as well as science and mathematics. It's a process. It's about being able to identify the problem, coming up with solutions, selecting the best solution, and then applying that solution, and then coming back and to make sure that your solution worked. Creative thinking and imagination allows you to think beyond the norm. So being able to envision something and being able to implement that is very important. But a lot of times, because of your imagination and your creative thinking, you can start to apply the basic skills of mathematics and science to develop solutions to enable whatever you're thinking about. There was a time frame where I did not do well in school, and it was really in the math and the science grades. There was a turning point, though. As a part of one of our geometry classes, we had a teaching assistant that came in and talked to us about geometry. As a result of that conversation, it kind of inspired me to, to see that there was more to just this math than just taking a math class. There was things I could do with it once I actually left high school. My mission has been to help teach students about engineering, and at the latter portion of my life, I've been teaching them more about photonics in optical, optical engineering to help build the populations of students who can come into these fields because optics and photonics engineering is a very exciting field. Over the last 20 years, the demographics have changed in the fields of engineering, science, and mathematics. We're starting to see more women in engineering and science and mathematics as well as minorities in engineering and science and mathematics. Engineering is just like that. It's, it's exciting because you know that no matter where you are, the state of the art's always going to be advanced. And when you come into your office and you know you're going to be doing research in an area that's never been explored before, or you're coming up with a solution to a problem that has never been discovered before, or you're trying to counter a solution that our threat, our adversaries might have, it's exciting. It's never ending. Engineers live in an exciting world.